Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we find ourselves sprinting around demon infested mazes as we take a look at each of the terrifying monsters found within Dark Deception chapters 1 to 3, looking into their origins and explaining the gameplay associated with them. From a look at all their jump scares, to boss fights, and the environments they inhabit, think of this as a one stop video for everything you could possibly wish to know. This video is also based off the enhanced edition of Dark Deception, which gives us new insight into the lore of Glowstick Entertainment's creepy universe and additional monsters to cover. So sit back, relax, and let's try to S-rank this video. Before we look at each monster in turn, I would like to provide a theory which frames why these monsters exist and where. With the remaster of Dark Deception came a collection of secret notes, each written by a mysterious character known only by the initial E. Stay tuned for a new theory video investigating who this character could be and their potential role within the Dark Deception universe. E's notes give us key information about the monsters found behind each of the various nightmare portals as you'll soon see. However, if we look beyond what is written on these pages, we can come to some interesting conclusions as to where exactly the game world and its monsters exist. Each monster is tied to a particular sin, the souls of the sinful now bound to these wretched creatures. The entity controlling them is a powerful demon known as Malak, who at times also shows up to try and claim our protagonist's soul. A long time ago I theorised that the ballroom we find ourselves stranded in, for which of the ten nightmare portals are connected, was a kind of limbo, a purgatory for our character Doug Hauser, who we know led a life of sin and debauchery. I know all the terrible things you've done. So many good intentions laid to waste. I could see the regret eating away at your soul. <laughs> But now your time has come, and here you are, to grovel and beg. If this theory is correct, then it means Doug is trapped in the afterlife between the realm of heaven and hell. Malak would then be a representation of the devil, and behind his sealed door lies the gates of hell itself. There are said to be nine circles of hell, with each containing the souls of a specific kind of sinner. These are Limbo, Lust, Gluttony, Greed, Anger, Heresy, Violence, Fraud, and Treachery. So could it be that the nightmarish monster-filled mazes we navigate are indeed Malak's Hell Circles? A proverbial wrench in the works of this theory is found when observing there are in fact 10 circles in this ballroom. However, this could simply be because developer Glowstick Entertainment is creating their own universe and simply taking the concept of literature such as Dante's Inferno as influence for its own spin on the underworld. With this theory in mind, it's time to take a look at each of the five portals accessible so far and the monsters which lay in wait behind them. Set in a gloomy, rundown hotel, the first portal is dubbed Monkey Business, and is home to a horde of killer primates. These monkeys originated from the souls of murderers, humans who rejected their humanity when they took the life of another, and now find themselves bound to these creatures. These are no ordinary monkeys though, they are based on the creepy wind-up symbol monkey toys of decades past. However, rather than symbols, their hands are formed from blades coated in blood, their teeth sharp and pointy, also dripping from their diabolical urge to kill. While slower than the player, these monkeys work as a pack to try and cut us off at every turn, so if you hear their mechanical noises, it's best to turn the other way. With the arrival of Dark Deception Enhanced came a new boss enemy, the Chef Monkey. This culinary themed killer is taken from multiplayer spin-off Monsters and Mortals. It wears a chef uniform, and in place of blades we find a pair of deadly pizza rollers. Check out the jump scares associated with these murder monkeys. The 
Elementary Evil is the second realm, set within a creepy schoolhouse which becomes grimier and even more dilapidated the further in we explore. It is home to Agatha, a tormented child who has taken on the form of a twisted demon. She now houses the souls of her victims within the classrooms of the school, using them as her playthings whenever she wishes to unleash her cruelty and rage. Who are new friends? I'm so excited! Welcome! I heard we might be getting a new student here soon, so I put together this little welcoming party for you. It's really nice to have someone new to play with. Don't tell the others, but they've been getting pretty boring lately. <laughs> but you'll spice things up around here, won't you? You can share everything with me. All your secrets, all your mistakes, all your pain. That's what best friends are for, right? Once she welcomes Doug into her realm, Agatha begins to play a twisted game of hide and seek. She can run very quickly, catching up to the player in mere seconds. It is therefore imperative to use our speed boost in order to find a new hiding spot while trying to collect enough soul shards to unlock the exit. Things aren't always that simple though, as Agatha has a teleport ability which she often uses to cut us off at the pass. Here'd you go. An unmarked grave. It must be hers. We learn from the secret notes in this stage that Agatha is the embodiment of the soul of a vengeful child. It is said that when something horrible happens to a child, their soul becomes corrupted by rage and sadness, an evil spirit then born from that suffering. This explains why Agatha so enjoys toying with her victims, projecting the horrors that befell her human form while alive. It also ties Agatha to a character elsewhere within the Dark Deception universe. Throughout our journey, we collect up pieces of a ring altar for a woman named Beers. This witch-like figure was once an actress, whose soul was forfeit when she struck a deal with the demon Malak for fame and success while on Earth. This deal was signed in blood, the blood of a sacrifice. The victim of this sacrifice was a young child, the daughter of Beerus's maid, information garnered from her diary entry. Victor has shown me the ritual. I know all the words by heart. All we need is a sacrifice. None of Edgar's tramps will do, but the maid has a daughter that might do nicely. To add further credence to this theory, we can observe this drawing on the wall of a schoolhouse. It shows Agatha has a real disliking to Beers. A little girl sacrificed to a demon would certainly count as a horrible act, and surely be enough to corrupt the soul, making the maid's daughter a likely candidate for this monster. Eventually, once all of the shards are collected, Agatha traps Doug inside the assembly hall, and a boss fight ensues. This is a new addition for Dark Deception Enhanced, and sees Agatha chasing us in a confined space while teleporting about and spawning in a selection of explosive portal rings. Check out some highlights from this hair-raising encounter. Going somewhere? You! You'll never escape! I won't let you take my friends from me! The opulent manor and its eerie grounds are home to the next monster on today's rundown, the Gold Watchers. 
These are living statues made from pure gold and dressed in Renaissance era finery. The gold watchers only attack when the player looks away, unable to move when we gaze upon them. The mana they inhabit is crafted from gold, so much so that the entire environment is wrapped in a hazy yellow glow. As we navigate these trap infested hallways, we come across another note which explains the origin of the Gold Watchers. The note explains that the souls of the greedy are drawn to this particular realm. In life they only valued wealth, but now are cased inside the very gold they so loved, burning in it for eternity. In their place, a ruthless golden golem remains, the Gold Watcher itself. So this Nightmare Realm represents greed and once again lines up with our Circles of Hell theory. After escaping the manor and collecting up all of the soul shards, we must face off against a giant Gold Watcher boss. Once again, this encounter was taken from Monsters and Mortals. We see a giant statue rising up from behind the mansion and begin hurling axes the size of school buses at our hapless hero. The gate is locked and can only be opened if it is struck multiple times by said axes. While trying to achieve this, Malak and his Gold Watcher army chase us around the garden. Check out some highlights from this anxiety inducing gauntlet. There's no escape for you. <laughs> In the depths of the filthy putrid sewer system, we encounter the fourth monster type, the Dread Duckies. These giant duckies resemble the floating variety one might expect to find in their bathroom. However, you wouldn't want to take a dip with these foul creatures. As we navigate the stagnant waters of the Stranger Sewers stage, we see many Dread Duckies floating about. However, not all are active. Using the telepathy ability, it is possible to tell which pose a threat and which do not. Get too close to a living ducky and it awakens, sprouting a pair of rotten gangly legs and giving chase. Because the water slows our movement, using the speed boost and teleport abilities are imperative to survival. The duckies have both long and close range attacks. They are able to fire a hookshot out, snaring the player and freezing us to the spot. Fail to escape in time and the ducky eats us whole. But where do these terrors originate from? Well, once again we are provided with concrete answers from the mysterious character known as E. Their note explains as follows. The duckies contained the rotten souls of liars, flushed down to the sewers and left to decay. They are now creatures of deception as they were in life. These dreadful duckies are trying to blend in and hide behind their false appearance. Once we reach the end of the stage and deposit the soul shards into the ring altar, Malak appears to up the ante as he introduces his pet. This is a giant creature known as Doom Ducky, an entity able to fire out its head clear across the room to gobble up the player. Multiple gloved hands sprout from holes in its turtle-like back, which the Doom Ducky uses to hurl its smaller counterparts toward us. The objective of this boss fight is to close the door to the room it inhabits, while also opening up the exit.
After completing this challenge, we must sprint through the sewer system in a mad rush to the escape portal. Behind, Doom Ducky chases us, quickly closing ground, smashing through walls and battering down doors that block its path. The final stage of Chapter 3 is set in a creepy carnival, where packs of tiny but dangerous clown gremlins patrol. These clowns stand at just 3 feet tall, but they use their sharp teeth and claws to rip and tear the flesh of anyone they capture. While slow, they manage to flank and surround us due to their sheer number. They even use clown cars to chase us down quicker, spawning waves of the little blighters onto the map. Thanks to the enhanced updates, we get clarification as to the origins of these creepy clowns. According to this note, the clowns contain the souls of wretched people who liked to troll. They spent their lives antagonising and provoking others with a twisted pride. The actions of small-minded cowards who caused others misery as a source of amusement. Now in this underworld realm, those same trolls are cursed to exist within the bodies of these clown gremlins, eternally part of the circus. By the end of the zone, we are forced to once again face off against a boss challenge, this time in the form of giants known as Goliath Clowns. The Goliath Clowns spawn waves of gremlins onto the map, while trying to flatten Doug with their fists. Once they perform their ground pound attack, we must rush in and hit them with a hammer, repeating this process eventually destroys each of the Goliaths. I'll close off this video with a highlight reel from this epic boss encounter. Your suffering will be eternal! And with that, we come to the end of this look at the Monsters of Dark Deception chapters 1 to 3. I hope you found this video both entertaining and informative. And if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.